Hello, everyone. <laughs> good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to you, um, depending on whichever part of the world you are tuning in from. Um, it's a sunny morning out here, and I'm very excited to be with you here this morning as we are going to be taking another fresh new look at the financial markets. Well, before we kickstart the session, let's run through our daily routine by confirming that we are good to go this morning. So if you can see my screen and you can hear my voice loud and clear, please let me know in the comment section by typing in hi. So I would love to see your feedback, please, while I try to load up my comment box. Thank you very much as you do so. All right, all right. So I see a handful of comments here. A zero. Thank you very much. Good morning. Six one two three six one seven one. Thank you very much. Claudie four. Good morning to you. Gumislav zero seven. Good morning to you. Thank you very much. Marshall. Good morning to you, Marshall. All right, um, Tanga, good morning to you. Thank you very much and glad to have you guys around. So, well, I will be taking this as a positive feedback that we are good to go this morning. It's on this note, I welcome you all once again to yet another promising edition on the Extra and Speed Live. My own name is Sheriff Daramola, and for the next one hour, I'm going to be your host as we will be um, going into the financial landscape um, using simple and fundamental tools such as trend lines, key levels, and chart patterns to gain insight into the current market conditions on the assets on our watch list and, of course, use the information we gather to unravel the potential trajectory of price action for the um, upcoming New York session. Well, so far this week, we have been monitoring four major assets, which includes the U.S. All Sports, the U.S. Tech 100, the GPP USD, and of course, the XA USD. And we've been doing pretty well since the beginning of the week. So today, we are going to be reviewing these assets today to see how well they are doing. And of course, prepare ourselves ahead of today's trading session. For those of you who are joining for the first time, you're highly welcome and I'm very sure you will be asking what this is all about. Well, as technical traders, we gather here every day to come together as a community and engage in follow-ups and reviews of our current positions in preparation of the New York trading session. This session usually kickstarts 10 a.m. UTC, 11 a.m. West African time, and I recommend that you stay tuned in during this time so that you don't miss out on the insight that we will be sharing today. My aim is to equip you with the knowledge and skills necessary to make informed trading decisions independently. The more time you spend with me, the better you will become at comprehending our analytical approach and utilizing the information gathered here to enhance your own trading decisions and strategies. So once again, I extend a warm welcome to you. So with that being said, we will be diving right into the business. And the first thing we usually do is to check on the economic calendar. And for those of you who have been with me for a while now, you know how important this is as this fundamental factors often manifest on the charts in technical patterns and price movements. By monitoring the economic calendar, we can identify potential correlations between key economic releases and specific technical patterns on the chart, hereby proffering us with valuable information needed to position ourselves in such a way that we can capitalize on any potential move prior during and even after this economic event. So on the economic calendar based on the assets we've been monitoring since the beginning of the week, we are going to be focusing on both 
the United States and the United Kingdom economic docket. Now for today, Tuesday, November 14th, we have a handful of impactful events from both the United States and United Kingdom. Now the first one here from the United Kingdom had already happened about four to five hours ago and in fact it gave us an insight into the labor market of the United Kingdom. So we had a claim count change, we had the employment change and of course we had a high low unemployment rate. So we had a couple of mixed data here where the um, employment change came in way below expectations and the claim account change came in quite positive as um, we saw uh, the actual data came in at 17,000 as against the previous one which came in at 20,400. So which is of course a positive sign for the labor sector as well. Now, with this information here, we want to be looking at the GDP USD chart to see how the market had reacted to this event. In fact, it was a very positive traction, as we saw in the last couple of hours. So we will be looking at how we are going to be managing that position and as well see how to look out for new opportunities on that one. Then later today, in about two hours from now, we look forward to the consumer price index, which is considered to be a high impactful event that everyone in the market will be looking forward to. As it gives us an insight into the inflationary status, you see this data here. Um, sorry about that, please. So you see this data here measures inflation impacting the purchasing power of consumers and influencing market expectations about central bank's policies and interest rates. And a higher reading in this case scenario is considered to be positive in, uh, in the long run will affect the, um, the US dollar positively. Now, if we look at the previous data for the month on month and for the year on year, it came in at 0.4 and 3.7% respectively, while the economic projection for um, the month of October is a little bit lower than the previous one at 0.1% and 3.3% respectively. So we can take it as the fact that the economists are projecting a contraction in that, um, in that sector. So we're looking forward to what the actual data will be. Will it be just as expected? below expectation or even beyond expectations. But one important thing we know here that as technical traders, this anticipation of this event usually reflect on the chart as price action. Now talking about price action, let's move right into the first asset on our watch list for this week. So the U.S. all usually takes some time before it loads up. So let's take some time to... All right. So the first asset we are looking at for this week is going to be the U.S. all sport. And in fact, in the last um, 24 hours, we've done very well on this asset. As you will see, uh, you, will, you will be having a minimum of two positions running in profit right now with a total of approximately approximately over 230 pips in profit at this point in time. And there are some other factors that are affecting this asset beyond the scenes. Um, for, for instance, despite concerns about a slowing Chinese economy, the OPEX Plus report has shown an increase in oil production. And, you know, whenever we have these expectations that the Chinese economy is not too doing well, uh, we usually expect a dent in in demand for oil, which usually incites some fear in the market to increase um, sub, to increase and uh, to drop price to the downside. However, uh, a sudden growth in oil production revealed by the OPEX Plus data from yesterday is something that came to me as a surprise. However, a little dig into it shows that um, Angola and Nigeria. Yeah, were were were, were um, responsible for this uh, production for this high production in oil, and this has resulted in over two percent growth in the last 
um, since the beginning of the week, which is quite a surprise to everyone anyways. But at this point in time, it is very necessary that we ensure that we secure the current buy position as anything could happen now, as we've been noticing selling pressure since the Asian session today. And of course, there is also an ongoing anticipation for the U.S. inflation data, which could provide imp important cues for market participants today as well. Now, with this being said, let's look at things from a technical standpoint and let's see what has really been going on in this market since the beginning of this week and, in fact, what led to the decision for us buying the U.S. all spot. So, at the beginning of the week on the one-hour time frame here, we initially saw how price was confined within a range that was between the $76.75 level and the $76.35 area where it gave us an insight into the uncertainty that's happening in the market at that point in time. And of course, you know how we do it in this community. We exercise patience as soon as price falls into a range like this, waiting for either a breakdown of the support line to give us an opportunity to sell or the breakdown of the resistant line to give us an opportunity to buy. Now, in addition to this range was this ascending trend line, which we projected on this chart which of course has been holding the series of higher lows since last week, Wednesday. And of course, you know how we use our ascending trend lines in this community. As long as price remains above the ascending trend line, we will feel comfortable in a buy position and of course, look out for more buying opportunities. Now, with this in mind, we positioned ourselves to take advantage of a bullish opportunity above or at the breakout of the $76.75 area and I did mention here yesterday that for those of us who missed out on this opportunity, that we might, we should wait patiently for new structures to mature. And one of the structures we said here is price coming back to retest the structure to insight and uptrend move. And as you will see, price did not come that far as instead price continued to climb up. And we said if price climbs up, then we want to be buying above the $77.50 area, which triggered the second buy position. And since that moment, price had continued to the upside. So for those of us who took advantage of this opportunity, well done to you for being on standby to capitalize on this move. And for those of us who still have a buy position running right now, I want to encourage you to move all your stop losses right now. Let's secure this current position as we begin to notice some sell pressure resume since the Asian session today. So the most appropriate area to move all stop losses to should be anywhere around the $78 area based on this current market structure. And let's see what will happen going forward. Now, with a well-secured position at this juncture, what is going to be our next line of action? Are we going to continue buying or are there chances that we could witness some profit-taking activities which will reflect on the chart as a retracement move back down to the ascending trend line? Now, before we go into the details here, and for the sake of those who are not part of our live session yesterday, um, let's run through the daily time frame and let's see what is really going on in this market and what we actually saw at the beginning of the week to guide our decisions uh, for this week. Now, the first thing we noticed on the US all sport was the fact that price action was bullish, but the most important one are these levels we identify here both at the $75 area and, of course, at the $80 area mark. Now, why is the $75 area very important? Well, if we go to as far back as the month of July, we saw how the $75 area became a strong buying niche in this market, and since that time, price had continued to trade above the structure to further emphasize the strength of the buyers here. And last week trading session, despite the strong bearish momentum, we saw price drop back into the $75 area during the uh, midweek of last week. And since then, we noticed the emergence of buy pressure again. And considering the memory for buying power around this area, it makes quite a lot of sense that we look out for buying opportunity. Then the other level here, which happens to be the $80 mark, was serving as our key level for this week, which was broken last week. And of course, from a technical standpoint, whenever we see price break down a key structure such as this, we expect that some point in time price is likely going to come back to retest it, maybe to incite a downtrend scenario or a breakout could welcome 
more buying opportunities. So in that regard, and after measuring the distance, hold on a second, and after measuring the distance between where price was yesterday and this $80 mark, we had over 350 pips and we said we would like to capitalize on that counter trend opportunity if it happens. Then when we scale down into the four hours time frame, we begin to see things more clearly. The $80 level is still intact. Then we had a couple of descending trend line which reflected the strength of the sellers here in the last three to four weeks now, three weeks I guess. We had a descending trend line here which price had consistently respected that led to the breakdown of that key level at the $80 MAC. Now we went to, we saw this bearish momentum drop into the $75 area and we begin to notice the emergence of a potential reversal pattern in the form of a double bottom structure and in fact the inability of sellers to break through the $75 area was a red flag for us that we are likely having a reversal setup. And whenever we identify a reversal setup like this, we mark out a neckline which needs to be validated with a breakout retest of that structure for us to join an uptrend move. And look at what happened here last week Friday. We saw price break out of the neckline, came back to retest the structure and during the early hours of, two of this week, we saw another opportunity to join that uptrend move. So these are the structures here that um, gave us the inclination that it's more reasonable for us to look out for buying opportunities. Now, when we scale down into the one hour time frame to see how the market participant has been reacting to that structure, we saw this whole thing come up. And in fact, right now, we have a situation where price action is trapped within the range between the $78.63 level and the $78.20 area to emphasize the level of indecision going on here. And of course, you know how we do it in this community. As long as price remains within a range like this, we want to exercise patience and wait for either the breakout or breakdown of the range to give us an opportunity to buy or sell. Now, let's talk about the potentials of buyers here, considering the fact that this week has started on a bullish note and we could see a situation where this consolidation phase could transition into an uptrend continuation pattern like a bullish rectangular pattern may be where price will consolidate for a while before it finally breaks out of the resistant line to incite an uptrend situation. Now, there are two ways to which we can capitalize on this one. Now, for those of us who are profitable for this week so far, we can afford to leverage on the profit we had made so far. In that regard, playing a buy stop order just right above the $78.63 level makes quite a lot of sense. And in fact, if this does not work out and price gets taken out, we know that we are only risking some of the profit we have made so far this week. However, if you are new with us and this is your first time taking a position on the US all spot, you have nothing to leverage on at this point ends, I will be encouraging you to exercise patience and wait for confirmations after the breakout of that structure happen. And this, of course, will reflect on the chart as a breakout of structure price coming back to retest, it could come into the $78.63 level or it could even go to as far as the $78.43 area. But the most important thing you want to be seeing on this chart are double bottom structure, continued by pressure showing us signs that sellers are finding it difficult to drop below the $78.20 level and this of course will give us that opportunity to join that uptrend move. And please always note that it is very important you have a well-defined risk management strategy, have your stop losses in place. In this case scenario, for anything above the $78.63 area, you want to be having your stop loss close to the support line or even around the support line, which will be dovetailing to between 35 to 45 pips depending on where you place it within that range. Now, with the expectations of a bullish momentum here, um, you know how we do it in this community. I um, mean, as much as we are looking out for buying opportunities, we usually also take into consideration the fact that sellers could actually change the perspective of this of this asset. Now, if this going, is going to be happening today and sellers come in, how do we intend to sell and what are the implications that sellers come into the market? Well, first of all, I want to emphasize here that remember 
that we have an ascending trend line which we identified at the beginning of the week which actually captured the bullish momentum since last week Friday. And in fact, if any sell pressure come in here, of course, we have been noticing the sell pressure within the $78.63 and the $78.43 throughout the Asian session. If it persists and push price to the downside, I'm of the opinion that this could be um, the reflection of profit taking activities going on in the market as those who have bought at a cheap price let's say around the $76.50 area, will at some point want to be considering taking some of their profits off the market. And this usually reflects on the chart as a retracement phase. So even if a retracement phase happens here, I'm of the opinion that we still have the ascending trend line intact where the potentials of buying opportunities could still come in to incite an uptrend move. And not unless the ascending trend line is broken to the downside can I consider selling from a long-term perspective however if you are a counter trend trader or a scalper and you intend to capitalize on that bearish momentum maybe back into the trend line that will be dovetailing to a minimum of 150 pips to cut there and i'm very sure you want to be part of that move as it happens now if we do want to be joining that momentum how do we intend to capitalize on that well personally we have the 78 dollar 20 cent area which happens to be the support line of this current range where price action has been oscillating um, since the later part of the New York session yesterday. Now, if it so happens that price breaks down, remember we need some confirmations here, retest of structure, then we want to be joining a bearish move to the downside. Now, there is a caveat to this trading setup, that is if price will drop and retest the $78.20 level, and we have the privilege of joining a bearish move, please note that this is going to be a counter trend opportunity. And if you are one who does not feel comfortable taking counter trend opportunities, then I would advise you to stay clear of this one and wait for price, um, wait for the reaction of price around the ascending trend line before making new decisions. However, if you are a counter trend trader, a scalper, we feel, we feel comfortable taking this trade well, a breakdown retest, join the momentum to the downside. Now, if price continues to drop to the downside, please note that you do want to be on standby to move your stop losses accordingly to secure your positions. As you all know that we are on the uptrend and any time buyers could come in and push price to the upside. So as you move your stop losses accordingly, as soon as price gets into the $77.50 area, move your stop loss, secure the position, and let's see how the market will react to that structure. And if price goes on to break down, retest the $77.50 area, that will welcome more opportunities. And if price gets into this ascending trend line, depending on how price reacts, buy pressure here could welcome buying opportunities, and a breakdown of the ascending trend line will incite selling opportunities here. So these are my views on the US All Sport for today. Let's see how the market will play out. Our center of focus for today is basically between that range, between the $78.63 level and the $78.20 area. We are depending on the direction of the breakout will give us an insight into where price is likely going today. So you do want to be marking out these levels on your chart as you will be needing them as a reference point to guide your independent trading decisions for today's trading session so if you have any questions whatsoever feel free to let me know in the comment section so i will be taking the next 10 to 15 seconds off to see if there are any questions while you can also use that time to mark out these levels on your chart Alright, alright. So I see your comment here, Sashi96. Namaste to you. Um happy Diwali. I hope you that was two days ago, I guess. Um from Slovenia, Mojkal Mojka one one nine six nine. Good morning to you. Glad to have you around. 
Skiddy from Ireland, good morning to you. From Poland, Ada 3356, good morning to you guys. And glad to have you around this morning. Then there is a question here from Opebablo. Opebalo, I hope I pronounced your name correctly. Pardon me if I didn't. <laughs> How do I use news for trading decisions? Well, that's a very good question. And um, first of all, let me state here that we in this community are technical traders. And what this simply means is that we make our decisions based on the psychology of price movement on the chart. However, while we monitor the chart for trading decisions, we also take into consideration the fundamental factors that usually affect the market sentiment, which, of course, we most of the time see the anticipation of these economic events reflect on the chart as price action. And for the fact that the anticipation of these events usually drive the sentiment in the market, which in the long run will dovetail to price action on the chart, then why not just look at the price action? So what we do here is to time when the event will happen, if the event is happening about an hour from now, we go into the chart and look at what the setup is saying. How we have in a double bottom structure, how we have in a double top structure, how we have in an uptrend continuation pattern, and whatever pattern we have on the chart will definitely give us an idea of how the market participant will be reacting to this event. So this is how we get ready for um, events in this community as well. Now, if you look at the current structure I'm talking about here on the US All Sport, you will see that we have a range. And of course, the anticipation of the CPI data will be affecting, will affect the sentiment in the market. And that is the reason why we have seen price action confined within a range here in the last 12 hours in this market as majority are looking forward to the CPI data for queues if we are going for the hub or we are going further to the downside. So with that in mind, we've positioned ourselves in such a way that we can capitalize on whatever direction price action will be taking prior, during, and even after this event as our center of focus on the U.S. host point right now is at the $78.03 level and the $78.20 level where the direction of the breakout will give us clues into what will be happening. So, Ope, Ope Palo, I hope I pronounced that correctly. I hope I answered your question. If you still do not find clarity in it, please feel free to let me know. And I'm, trust me, I'm here and willing to be of help in that regard. All right. So in the absence of no questions, I want to assume that we are all on the same page here. And in that regard, uh, we'll be moving on to the next asset on our watch list. So you are very much welcome, um, Ope Balo. Okay, all right, great, glad. All right, so moving on. So the next asset on our watch list for today is the US Tech 100. And in fact, we have an interesting situation going on in this market right now. As you will see that in the last 24 hours, price action has been consolidating, which further emphasized the anticipation of the CPI data, which is coming up later today, as majority are stepping aside from the market, waiting for catalysts like the CPI to advise on where we will be going. And as you will see that since yesterday, price action has been consolidating and in fact confined within the 15,530 and the 15,445 level to further emphasize the indecision that has gripped this market. Now, though we saw price break down the 15,445 here yesterday, but I do hope you did not take advantage of that move. As you know, we said here that we want to see some confirmation happen before we sell as we are on a hop trend scenario that we need a breakdown retest of structure before we jump into any sell position. Though we saw the breakdown, but we never saw price come back to retest as the attempt to retest incited new higher highs and higher lows in this particular market. However, if you had had a buy stop order above the 15,530, you must have had a buy position triggered right now 
and the current position will be in a loss of about let's see um roughly about five to ten pips there about is it is it up to one it's not up to one pips i guess so so the, the situation we have right now is in a limbo as majority in the market are looking forward to what the um, actual data from the cpi will will be to give us an insight into the health of the united states economy however from a technical standpoint let's quickly take a quick look at the higher time frame so that we can have an holistic perspective into what is going on here and for the sake of those who missed out on our earlier sessions they have the privilege of being on the same page with us now the first thing we did here at the beginning of the week was to scale up into the daily time frame and for those of you who have been with me for a while now you will be familiar with this current market structure as you will see that since the beginning of this year price action had consistently and uniformly found higher lows giving us an ascending trend line to work with now something interesting happened about um a couple of weeks ago about three weeks ago we finally saw price break down that ascending trend line for the first time this year though the breakdown did not come to us as a surprise as we already anticipated it as we noticed the series of lower highs in this market um, for the last four to five months before it led to the breakdown of that ascending trend line now from a technical standpoint whenever price breaks down of a key structure such as this we expect price to come back and retest the structure to incite a downtrend scenario now in the last couple of weeks we saw price gain some momentum buyers continue to push price to the upside until it came into this area and we begin to notice some consolidation around that area now mind you that level was our key level for this week as in fact since last week we have been using this level as our key level and one prominent thing about this key level is how it has been a strong selling niche in this market since the month of june if you take a closer look at the structure you see selling niche here selling niche here though we had situations where price did break out of that structure but they never lasted long as we saw price drop back into that area but most importantly the 15,300 has been considered to be a very strong selling niche in this particular market now during the last the midweek during the second half of last week we saw a consolidation phase here giving us further signs that price may likely retest that confluence to incite a downtrend move but as at the beginning of this week something interesting so that on friday's trading session for last week something interesting happened in this market where we witnessed a significant breakout of all the confluences here including the key level to incite an engulfing bullish candle breaking out of that structure now with the way things are going right now the question at this juncture is will the breakout of this key level turn out to be a true breakout or a false breakout now from a technical standpoint we expect that whenever price action breaks out of a structure such as this one we expect price action to come back retest the structure and of course incite an uptrend move and for the fact that price action has gone back above the ascending trend line it's looking as if price may continue to climb up however we cannot ignore the potentials of sellers as we could still witness situations where price could break down both the 15,300 and of course the ascending trend line where continuous selling pressure below the structure could incite the downtrend continuation so in that regard we wanted to understand what is going on here and how market participant will be reacting to this breakout this week so in that regard we want to be focusing at the tip right here around the 15,545 to see how the market has been reacting to the structure since the beginning of this week now for us to be able to see this we will scale down into the one hour time frame and this is exactly what is going on here as you will see price action is currently within a range just right above that highest point now based on the current structure and considering the fact that price action is within a range 
it is very, very important that we exercise patience. Though we have a buy position that is triggered right now, we want to be seen in the session if this buy position is going to hold or not. Now, one thing I have noticed within this consolidation phase is how price action has, has found higher lows. As you will see, if we connect the series of higher lows here, we have a beautiful ascending trend line to work with. Then I will bring back my candle chart so we can do some little adjustments so that all the pivot lows can be tested. Now, you know how we use our ascending trend lines in this community. As long as price action remains above the ascending trend line, we of course want to be looking out for patterns and structures that support the idea of buying that asset. Now, with the way things are going right now, it makes quite a lot of sense to be in the buy position. So if you're in the buy position, it's okay. Just ensure that you have your stop losses in place. I will suggest that anywhere around the 15,470 area, which will be dovetailing to about 50 to 55 pips, will seem quite reasonable to protect this position that we are currently in. And if price continues to climb up, then we feel comfortable more in our buy position. So on the US Tech 100 today, I hold on to a bullish bias and I'm still looking forward to price staying above the 15,530 to feel comfortable on this one. However, in as much as we're looking out for buying, op buying opportunity, we also want to take into consideration the potentials that the sellers also have in this market. And after looking at what is happening on the higher time frame, we talked about how the ascent, the breakout of that key level at the 15,300 could turn out to be a false breakout. Now, if that is going to be the case, we are likely going to see price drop to the downside or even come back to retest the structure that was broken on Friday to insight and uptrend move. And if you look at the distance between where price action is right now and that level to be tested, we have a minimum of 200 pips to catch there. Now, if we are going to be joining a bearish move, what is it that we want to be seeing to join a move? Well, since we have a range where price is confined within, that is between the 15,445 and the 15,530, we usually expect a breakdown retest of the support line before we join a bearish move. However, in this case scenario where we have an ascending trend line already within the range, we might be able to join a bearish move even before the breakdown of the support line of that range happen. Now, how is that? Well, we want to see price take out the ascending trend line. If a breakdown of the ascending trend line happens again, then this might be a sign that the trend line may no longer have the capacity to continue to negate the bearish attempt. And if it so happens that we have a retest of structure on our lower time frame, giving us good confirmations that sellers are getting stronger, we like series of lower highs and lower lows or continued selling pressure. Most importantly, we want to see that buyers are finding it difficult to climb back above the ascending trend line and then we can join a bearish momentum, then have a sell stop order again below the 15,445 to ride the move all the way to the downside. Now, if price continues to drop and get into the key level at the 15,300, please note that we want to be patient around that area and see how the market participant will be reacting to the structure. Now, if price continues to break down the key level at the 15,300, then we look out for more selling opportunities. And in fact, if buy pressure resumes, when we begin to notice reversal patterns, maybe double bottom structure, and sellers finding it difficult to break through the 15,300, then this will welcome an uptrend continuation. So this is how we are going to be managing our positions on the US Tech 100 today. So let's see if the market will break down, retest the ascending trend. Now, if it does, we get ready for buying opportunities and if price, sorry, get ready for selling opportunities. And if price action goes back above the 15,530, we'll feel more comfortable in our buy positions. So these are my views on the US Tech 100 for today. So our center of focus is basically around that ascending trend line for today. Let's see how the market will react to that trend line. And depending on the reaction to the trend line will give us clues into where price is likely going for today. If you have any questions whatsoever as regards to my explanations or as regards to the current setup, feel free to let me know in the comment section. So as usual, I will be taking the next 10 to 15 seconds off to see if there are any questions while you can also use your time to mark out these levels on your chart as you will be needing them as a reference point to guide your independent trading decisions today.
All right, all right. So in the absence of no questions, I will take this as a confirmation that we are good to go this morning. I see your comment here, Warisas D E R eight. Good morning to you. Uh Mosh Avet, good morning to you. Hapsheki, good morning to you. Thank you very much for checking in on us. So with that being said here, let's move right into um okay i see a three four seven two five eight wants us to do hero aud um hero aud is not in our watch list for this week but i'm not sure we will have enough time to do that today so that is why i usually advise us to be part of the monday session where you have the privilege of submitting assets you want us to monitor for this week so i will encourage you to be part of monday's next week session where you can actually bring in assets you want us to look at. And of course, we will be monitoring those assets throughout the week. Okay. All right. So in the absence of no questions, let's move on to the next asset on our watch list. So the next asset on our watch list for today is the GBP USD, and in fact, in the last 24 hours, the GBP USD has done very, very well as we have been buying this asset ever since the price action broke out the 1.22300 level yesterday morning, and since that moment, price action had moved significantly well in our favor. Well, the GPUSD at this point in time is roughly running with over. Okay, let's see what is going on here from a technical standpoint. But before I go into the technicalities here, uh, remember that we are looking forward to, um, we've, we already saw the release of employment data from the United Kingdom, which came in um, with mixed data. We saw some favorable ones and some, some who are not um, too good at all. But um, the market reaction has been very bullish. However, we are still there is still an eye anticipation for the upcoming U.S. inflation data, which will also impact market sentiment. Now, what we are going to be doing right now is to see how the market is likely going to react to this event based on how it has been anticipating it. Now, the first thing we saw on the one-hour time frame GAP U.S. the chart was the fact that price action was initially caught within a range between the 1.22375 and the 1.22225 level for the first um, 12 to 10, 10 to 12 hours of the week to emphasize the uncertainty that had gripped the market at that point. And I told you all yesterday that I, I bought the GPUS at the 1.223, and I told us all that we want to be capitalizing on the breakout retest of the 1.22. 375 here which happens to be the resistant line of that range and for those of us who missed out on the breakout we can see what happened here the market came back to do retest of structure in fact we had multiple retests of the structure so for those of us who missed out on that opportunity the market gave us ample time to be part of that uptrend move and as you will see we saw price continue to climb to the upside and remember, during our live session yesterday, I emphasized that we will be looking out for more opportunities at the breakout of the 1.22535 level. And though you are not, we were not uh, here, this is where we said we are going to be adding more position. But personally, I added more, had a breakout of the 1.22710 and of course the 1.22805. And if you are taking advantage of this one still, well done and kudos to you for being on standby to capitalize on that move. Now, for those of us who still have a buy position running, that is if you are taking it from the first entry point, you will currently be having about 55 pips in profit, while the second one from here is about 50 pips in profit, while the third one here is about um, 35 pips in profit. So we are roughly about 120 pips, which is not bad for the start of the week. 
And of course, you know how we do it in this community. As soon as price action moves significantly well in our favor, we want to be moving our stop losses, secure and protect the current positions while we look out for new opportunities. Now, with the way things are going right now, I will suggest that anywhere between this range, that is between the 1.22805 and the 1.227 seems most appropriate to secure all positions because this is right below or close around that ascending trend line, as you will see here. Now, with a well-secured position, how do we intend to capitalize on the next move? Now, before we go into the details here, and for the sake of clarity, let me quickly share something with you that we saw on the higher time frame. And for the sake of time, I will only go into the four hours time frame. And for those of us who are part of the live session yesterday, you will be familiar with the structure. And I laid emphasis on the importance of this impulsive move that started a couple of weeks ago, giving us this impulse leg right here. And I mentioned that the old bearish momentum we noticed throughout last week may be as a result of profit-taking activities, which usually reflects on the chart as a retracement move. And of course, using our Fibonacci retracement tool, we projected an area where the retracement is supposed to end and in fact we marked out between the 61.8 and the 78.6% of the impulse leg and we saw what happened here right, right here on Friday. We saw a sharp rejection of the structure and of course the breakout of the 1.22300 area emphasized that price will be going to the upside. So everything about this chart is just screaming bullish here and another interesting thing about this old structure is how price respected this ascending trend line multiple times since last week, Wednesday. And in that regard, as long as price remains above this ascending trend line, we want to continue to hold on to a bullish bias. However, something interesting is going on in this market right now as price action is at a crucial juncture where we begin to notice some selling pressure resume around this area. And this area we are talking about here is the 1.2 300 level it's a psychological area considering the round figure of that price and in fact if we look at what happened around this level last week tuesday we saw selling pressure there this happened till wednesday we saw the same thing happen till thursday in fact it continued to push price to the downside and right now price is back into that structure now the thing that will further confirm and make us feel comfortable in this buy position is for price action to break out Rates as the 1.23 to incite more opportunities here. However, if this does not happen, the tendency that sellers goes to come in is still very visible. So now at this point in time, I want to see price action take out the um, this 1.23 area for me to feel comfortable selling. However, if the sell pressure persists just like it had been doing since last week, um, I would rather want to see price break down this ascending trend line before I can consider um, selling this asset. So if price will break down this ascending trend line, only then will I start considering selling. Then I look for confirmations like retest of structure after which I want to be part of that bearish move. So this is the only condition here that will make me want to sell. But as long as price still remains above the ascending trend line, we could still see situations where price could drop back into the structure from some reversal patterns before we have another move to the upside. And in fact, we could see something like an inverse head and shoulder. If you look at this structure closely, we can see we have the left shoulder right here. Price dropped back into the 1.23 area. Then we have the head. Then price came back again into the 1.23. And we can have a situation where price will drop to transition to form the right shoulder before the breakout retest of the neckline happens to incite an uptrend continuation. So I still hold on to a bullish bias here and the only condition that will make us sell is for price to drop below the ascending trend line to the downside. So these are my views on the GBP USD for today. If you have any questions, feel free to let me know in the comment section. So I'm looking at buying had it more buy positions at the breakout of the 1.23 area. So I will be taking the next 10 to 15 seconds again to see if there are any questions. While well, you can also use that time to mark out these levels on your chart as you will be needing them as a reference point to guide your independent trading decisions.
So I see you, um, Jamest, good morning. Marketer, good morning to you. 5339151618. Um, Lady Dollar Vola, <laughs> I like that name. Lady Dollar Vola, it is good morning to you. All right. So in the absence of no questions, let's take this as a confirmation that we are good to go. And in that regard, we move on to the last asset on our watch list for today. So the final asset on our watch list for today is my favorite, and that is the XAU USD. And in fact, we have an interesting situation going on in this market right now. Well, um, from a fundamental perspective, um, we can see that um, in the last 24 hours, we saw uh, a bullish momentum, which actually broke out of the resistant line of the range we identified yesterday and since then buyers have grappled to sustain the this bullish momentum as we notice some selling pressure resumed during the asian session um, today gold prices seems to lose traction around the 1945 level that was during the asian session as majority in the market anticipates the u.s consumer price index data coming up later today and this will also be giving us a um, crucial economic indicator for the into the U.S. economy. And meanwhile, the ongoing geopolitical conflict in the Middle East continue to command attention with the potential to amplify safe haven assets such as gold. Now, with the situation we have here, let's look at things from a technical standpoint. And what is it that really happened at the beginning of the week that led to the decisions we made? Well, the first thing we observed at the beginning of the week was this ascending trend line. Remember, we saw this ascending trend line duly marked out, which confirmed that price is climbing to the upside. Then we also identified the series of lower highs here, giving us a descending trend line and giving us something that looks more like K pennant, which um, a breakout will welcome trading opportunities. Now, coupled with that, we saw a range, like I mentioned earlier, price caught within a range. And of course, you know how we use our ranges in this community. When price falls into a range, we wait for either the breakout or the breakdown of the range to give us an opportunity to trade. Now, I told you yesterday that if we are going to be selling, we want to see price break down the support line. Then we wait for confirmation only before we join the bearish move. Now we saw price break down and in an attempt to make a retest of structure, you saw that how that retest failed as we saw an engulfing bullish candle taking us out and price continued to move to the upside. So at no point in time did we have any sell position here as we never saw a breakout retest of structure. And in that regard, we saw our buy position triggered at the 1,941 area. And since then, we have been in a buy position. And for those of us who took advantage of that opportunity, well done to you. And if you still have your buy position running right now, you will currently be running with a minimum of um, how many pips now? About, about 55, 56 pips in profit at this point. And with the scenario we have here, you want to be moving your stop losses accordingly to secure the current position. And I'm of the opinion that the first entry point here around the $1,941.50 area seems most reasonable to place all stop losses for all buy positions. Remember, we have two buy positions. The second one was supposed to be at the breakout of the $1,945. And this one right here is running with about 15 pips in profit. So with a well-secured position at this juncture, let's quickly take a look at the higher time frame to have an holistic perspective into what is going on in this market. And for the sake of our time, I will only be touching the four hours time frame. Now on the four hours time frame here, remember that we had a beautiful setup identified here where we noticed that price action was within a demand zone, which has been consistent since the um, mid-month of October as you will see here and this area here is the $1,940 area you can see buy pressure around this area and since price came back into the structure last week we noticed another buy pressure around this area 
Now, coupled with the demand zone we have here, we also identified an uptrend continuation pattern. After considering this impulsive move into the structure, we saw our price consolidated and transitioned into what is looking like a pennant or less a wedge, sorry, or it could be called a flag pattern depending on what perspective you are looking at it from. But the most important thing here is the fact that it is theoretically considered to be an uptrend continuation pattern. And usually whenever we have this kind of pattern on the chart, we want to see price break out of the resistant line of the pattern, retest it to incite an uptrend situation. Now, one interesting thing about this structure is how the 1,945 level, which happens to be our key level for this week, shares a beautiful confluence with this um, resistant line of that pattern. And of course, you know how we use our ascending trend lines in this community. As long as price remains above the ascending trend line, we want to be looking out for patterns and structures that support the idea of buying that asset. Now, with the situation we have and with the information we have gathered on the four hours time frame, how do we intend to capitalize on this move? Now, I want us to take into consideration this fact, this impulsive move, this engulfing bullish candle that spring out of this demand zone. For me, is a beautiful sign that the buyers are still very strong in this particular market. And I told you yesterday, remember, that the only condition that will make me sell is for price to break down to 1930 taking out that demand zone then we can join a bearish move to the downside and since this is yet to happen let's consider how to capitalize on an uptrend move now scaling down into the one hour time frame following that impulsive move that broke out of our range of yesterday you will see that as soon as price tested the 1948 area during the Later part of the New York session, we saw our price transition into a flat channel confined within a range between the $1,948 and the $1,943.70 level to emphasize the level of indecision going on in this market. Now, with the situation we have here, you are familiar with this kind of structure. You know how we do it whenever we have a flat range. We exercise patience and wait for either the breakout or breakdown of the resistant line to give us an opportunity to either buy or sell. Now, based on the fact that price is, um, we had a very strong bullish momentum yesterday, and the fact that price still remains above that ascending trend line we spotted here on the one hour time frame, I will hold on to a bullish bias here. So, in that regard, I want to be positioning myself just right above the 1,948 area, which a breakout of the structure will have taken out all the sell positions there to incite an uptrend continuation. Now, there is a caveat to this scenario for those of us who have been profitable so far this week. You can afford to place your buy stop there as you can leverage on the profit you had made so far this week. However, for those of us who are joining for the first time, you want to exercise patience and I encourage you to wait for confirmations like retest of structure. It could be the retest of the 1,948. In fact, it could come to as far as the 1,945 before an uptrend continuation happens, then you can join that move to the upside. So personally, I'm holding on to a bullish bias here. However, we could see a situation which is very, very possible that price breaks down the 1,943 to incite a bearish move. Personally, I wouldn't be joining that move because of this ascending trend line here, but instead wait to see how the market will react to this ascending trend line to determine what our next line of action will be. So if we see price break down the ascending trend line, then this could welcome some selling opportunities to the downside. And if instead price continue to find buy pressure may be giving us a double bottom structure or any reversal pattern you can think of then we could start considering buying this asset as long as price still remains above this ascending trend line we maintain a bullish bias and the only condition that will make us sell is for price to break down retest that ascending trend line so on this note these are my views here on the xausd i do hope i made myself clear but if you feel that you need me to do some clarifications, feel free to let me know in the comment section. So 
As usual, I will be taking the next 10 to 15 seconds off to see if there are any questions while you also use that time to mark out these crucial levels on your chart as you will be needing them as a reference point to guide your independent trading decisions for today. Hello Fabio, how are you doing Fabio? Trust you are doing very well out there. Alright, alright. So in the absence of no questions, I want to take this as a confirmation that we are good to go. And on this note, I want to wish us all the best of luck today. It has been a wonderful moment with you guys today as I really enjoyed every single moment I had with you today. So in the course of this session, we were able to attend to four major assets, which includes the um us all sports the us tech 100 we also attended to the gbp usd and finally the xa usd popularly known as the gold sports and in all of the assets we were able to identify very simple setups using fundamental tools such as trend lines key levels and chart patterns to position ourselves strategically ahead of the new york session today so I encourage us all to exercise patience. I do hope you marked out these levels on your chart. So you want to be waiting for the structures to mature before you jump into any positions. And always remember that you do want to be having a well-defined risk management strategy for every positions you are making as every move we make is more or less an educated guess until your price hits your TP target. So with that being said here, for those of you who joined us for the first time, I do hope you gained something today. And if you did, I will look forward to seeing more of you same time tomorrow, 10 a.m. UTC, 11 a.m. West African time, as we come here again to review how well these assets have been doing and at the same time get ready for tomorrow's New York session. So on this note, I wish us all the best of luck and do have a wonderful evening, everyone. Bye-bye. <laughs>